So this week I'm in Indiana. Let's take a look at the family that needs my help. Hi, we're the Addis family. I'm Leslie. I'm Tony, and we have four kids. <laughs> we have twin boys, Jonah and Jonathan, who are almost six. <laughs> Eden, who's four, and Elijah, who's almost two. I'm a technical consultant. Uh, my hours are generally Monday through Friday, eight to five. And I'm a stay-at-home mom, and I'm here with the kids all day. <laughs> One of my biggest issues is the temper tantrums. They're getting big enough that they're hard to manage. And I find myself a lot of days just giving up and throwing in the towel. Jonah, me from there. sit. Oh. The twins get physical with me. Jonah. Yeah, on your wall. They will hit and kick me. You are in time out. And so I just try to get away from them. Eden is our little princess. Eden has gotten incredibly defiant. <laughs> She just does not want to cooperate. Look at this little girl. She has everybody running to her beck and call. Not good for her, not good for them. Elijah can cause a lot of problems. Hey, Elijah, no, don't okay. knock it over. As well as the kids, my mom lives with us. Good job. About six months ago, my dad tragically died. We were boating, and he was out on a jet ski. He had fallen off, and he ended up bleeding under his, his skull. And so the kids saw us trying to perform CPR. It was just very, very hard for the kids. I have noticed behavior changes in them since dad died. Everything just seems amplified, and so any aggressive behavior they had before seems really heightened now. Children digest death very differently to, to adults. Sometimes it gets very overwhelming. As a matter of fact, it's hard for me not to start off feeling overwhelmed. Don't, please don't act like you. So there's a lot of things that I don't do. Um, I don't get to the grocery store because I can't get there with all of them. And um, it's hard. Super Nanny, we really need your help. Please come help our family now. Okay, guys, bear with me. I know there's a lot to sort out, but I'm on my way. Hello. Hi. Joe. Leslie. Hi. Nice to meet you. Knowing that she was coming in to watch me was unnerving. <laughs> Should we close the door here? <laughs> This is my mom, Nana. Hi, pleased I'm to meet you. This is um, my husband, Tony. Hi, Tony, pleased to meet you. The Addis family have four children, Jonah and Jonathan, who are twins and six years old, Eden, who is almost five years old, and little Elijah, who is two years old. Just show me what you would do in an ordinary day if I wasn't here, so I can observe as much as possible. Just please carry on. All right. I guess we'll see what happens here. OK. As soon as I started to observe the family, I noticed that Elijah was very tired and he started to pitch a fit. I see Leslie has been very much a young girl still. She hasn't really stepped up to the realm of being this mature woman who is a mother of four children. <sighs> you can see the dependency still on her mother, Charity, and how she takes care of the whole nest. Okay. 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 Let's see pictures. Okay. They are all going through such severe grief at the moment. Rick's death was a sudden shock, and he died at such a relatively young age. I mean, it's understandable that it's made such an impact on this family. Some puppies candy? Yeah. I guess. A big part of us is so concerned about the kids remembering um, my husband and their their pappy. <laughs> Who is that? Who is that? Puppy. To watch charity with Elijah upstairs was definitely a place where you just kind of felt 
She's feeling, she's really feeling it. Is this puppy outside? Yeah. See that one? Oh, oh you love puppy. She doesn't want Elijah to kind of forget who he is, but the reality is he's so young, and I just don't want Elijah to, to grow up feeling like he's conditioned to kiss photos if he wants candy. Peppy loves you too. It was a tricky situation to be in for me, to, you know, to see that. So it's got to be dealt with very sensitively and, and very directly too. Oh, good. Eden, go brush your teeth. Go brush your teeth. The children were asked to brush their teeth, and Eden made a really big fuss about it. Go brush your teeth. And she didn't want to go into the bathroom at all. She just absolutely refused. I have a tendency to try to reason with them, and that is not always the best uh, solution. Hey, look at me. Look at me. Right here, eyes. Eyes even. What color are my eyes? What color are my eyes? Look at me. Hey, e Green, blue. Okay. No. Tony continuously asked them to look into his eyes all the time. I'm up here. Look at me. My eyes are right up here. Hold those up here by my eyes if you have to. Look at my eyes. It just doesn't work. Are you seeing me? So Tony finally gets Eden to the sink, and it's a standoff. You ready to brush your teeth? She crossed her hands. She certainly didn't want to brush her teeth, and she made a big riot about it. <laughs> when Eden gets to that point, I feel just completely out of control. I just know it's going to not end well. I want mommy to do it. You want mommy to do what? And then I got a very clear opportunity to see exactly how the three, meaning Tony, Leslie, and Charity, discipline Eden when she's disrespectful and doesn't want to do as she's been told. They do nothing. Oh, you trust it! I'm sorry. <sighs> oh. I don't, I, you don't do it like that! Well, it started out that we had disciplined children. It's just, it's just unraveled over time. So from the time they asked Eden to go upstairs and brush her teeth to the time she actually did brush her teeth, it was way over an hour, and I realised that Eden may possibly be stubborn whilst I was there. Do you need a fork or anything, or is that good enough for you? Hmm. So lunchtime calls in. Bye. Put your banana right here, and it'll be like a face. No. And they sit there eating their peanut butter sandwiches. And then I look at the table and I see sippy cups. How many sippy cups do you need in a house where there's only one two-year-old? I mean, to me, that's just absolutely crazy. These kids are more than capable of drinking out of a cup. So why sippy cups? When I was a baby, I had to take that small of my... You did? Are you a baby still? Uh-uh. Why are you taking you that much? small of bites? There are children who are almost six years old eating like babies. So I hear Grandma tell Mum that Jonah is calling for her. Hey, are you done? Do you need me to wipe you? Jonah, do you need me to wipe you? I can't do it. OK. All right. And then I realise that Jonah is calling for Mum because he wants her to wipe his bottom. This boy is six years old. Wash your hands, okay? I mean, what's going on in this house? Later on in the afternoon, Mum and the kids spent some time doing crafts. Here you go. Mum gave Eden a sticker that was on Jonathan's monkey to her by accident. And he wasn't happy with that. Heart's fire. Oh, no you know what? I didn't know it was your heart ear, and I gave it to Eden to put on her monkey. I didn't know it was yours. I accidentally gave Eden Jonathan's sticker because it had fallen off of the monkey. I'm sorry. Honey, 
I didn't mean to do that. Jonathan, I'm sorry. Mommy, Aiden, we accidentally put Mommy. Jonathan's heart sticker on your monkey. Can I take it off and put something else on your no. monkey's belly? No, oh, it's ruined. I kind of was hoping that she would just say, OK, but she did not want any part of that. No. Can we do that for Jonathan, please? Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. So I just felt kind of trapped, like no matter what I did, whether I corrected my mistake or whether I didn't, somebody was going to be very unhappy. So now what? Fell off. What to do? You don't know what to do. Yeah. With the stars and the monkey stop. noses. Because either way, I felt like I lose. Yeah. She tells me that she feels guilty because one of the kids are going to be upset over the decision that she's made. That's life. Eden, can we please give him the heart nose, and I'll put this heart that Mommy drew no. on your nose. That I find myself sometimes trying to please all of the kids. What if we found a phone sticker? No. Ah, phone. No, phone. You're not going to keep all your kids happy 24-7. No. But you get on it and you deal with it. There's no doubt when I walked into this house that it was obvious that all of you as a family are undergoing a griefing process. Your father-in-law, your husband passed away about six months ago and you are all going through that grieving process. It's having its ups and downs because grief will throw you upside down in every which way it can. And I can tell you that from personal experience losing my mother. Yesterday, charity, I saw little Elijah and he, and he said, he said, Candy, as we were upstairs, he said, Candy. And he, he, he kissed the photos of Grandpa, and then you gave him candy. If Grandma gives Elijah candy because Grandma has earned the right to give him candy, and it's OK, let it be for that. I never put the two together, the, the candy it was just done. Rick had a candy jar and gave the kids candy out of it. So I was trying, because he's not going to be able to. You know, that that's all part of the process of you personally grieving. He's not going to be there for the first Christmas, the first birthday, the first anniversary, you know. I hear you. It's true. What I wanted to talk about was that as much as there is a grieving process going on, at the same time, I am here because there are issues that do need to be addressed with regards to the kids. Let's start off with Eden. Eden really shows me that she has been allowed by the adults in her life to be able to have what she wants, when she wants, however she wants. So. It's important for Eden to understand she must give a level of respect, but at the same time, respect the rules that are in the house and the authority of her parents. Otherwise, you're going to have a nightmare on your hands. You really are. But what I want to talk about also is allowing the kids to, to use the cups that they should be for their own age. I was quite shocked to see the twins with the sippy cups. The sippy cup, they're six years old. What are they doing with sippy cups? I think there is a lot of things they should be doing that they're not doing. I agree. But I think a six-year-old should be able to wipe their own butt, you know? They're more than capable. You know, how do they learn if you're not going to give them the chance? The Lack of management I'm seeing here, Leslie, when it comes to the kids. This sense of not being confident to make the right move because you don't know what the outcome's going to be leads you in a place of constantly feeling like you're failing all the time. Up until now, you've had your mother call those shots. But at what point do you stand on your own two feet and raise the bar as an adult and say, I I've got to learn myself. It is hard for me to make a decision um, because I, I am afraid I'm going to make a mistake. And I feel like mom has been there and done that and made some mistakes and learned from those. So I, 
I do try to ask her opinion a lot. To not make a decision is to not take any responsibility or to be opinionated with what you feel or how you feel your kids should be raised. A lot has been said today at the table with regards to the issues that we need to get through. And I am very, very enthusiastic to get working with all of you. So do I have a family on board? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get to work because there's much to be done, much to be done. Thank you. On my first day, I wanted to focus on parental skills because the children's behaviour is getting confused with the family's grieving process. The first step was to ask Grandma to leave so that Leslie wouldn't be dependent on her help so that she could just stand up on her own. I am going to run out and get a pedicure. OK. OK, you have fun. Right. Leslie definitely needs to feel the sense of responsibility and independence, but she has that crutch and that's her mother and to a degree it's been a godsend and and, and not because it's made her slightly lazy and dependent on her mother. Amanda, bye. I'll be back in a little bit, OK? Bye. I love you. With Grandma gone, it was time to get these kids to back their age and wipe their own bottoms. <laughs> and right away, Eden gave me the chance to show Mum exactly how. <laughs> oh, this is great. Yes, Eden. Oh, this is, is good. What is, was that? She, is she old enough to wipe herself after yeah. she poops? Oh, yeah. We've got a five-year-old who's struggling to wipe her own bottom. I just thought that was crazy. OK, this is what you want to do. Don't wipe her bottom. She's got to learn to do it herself, OK? okay. Go in there, OK? And then tell her what to do, okay. all, right? all right? What I would do as well is that I would keep some, like, wet wipes as well. There are some in, in there. there. Great. All yeah. right, let's go and do it. Right. Come out and tell me that you haven't done it, OK? <laughs> she needs to learn to do it herself. OK. <laughs> yes, Eden. I had Mum in the bathroom teaching Eden how to take care of herself on her own accord. Which was quite funny, actually, listening to her through that door. Hey, don't tell me how to wipe. I'm going to teach you how to wipe. Now pull out one wipe. Remember, front to back. OK. <laughs> I'm often asked, when should a child wipe their own bottom? Typically between three and four years old, and Eden's almost five years old, so she's way overdue. Do you know how many American houses I've been into where the kids don't wipe their own butt? It's quite interesting. You know, you want to make sure they're clean and you want to make sure that, you know, they've got good hygiene and they're taking care of themselves, but sometimes you don't think they're ready to do that, so you're just doing it for them. Good job. Good job, Eden. Good job. She said, I can't believe I wiped myself. Milk. After the tutorial on wiping bottoms, it was now time to address these six-year-old boys drinking out of zippy cups. And I knew the solution would be simple. Get rid of those cups, put in regular cups, and let them feel like big boys. OK. I just honestly misjudge what they're actually capable of doing. They work well. Do they work well? There's going to be a few spills here and there, but they soon learn. Sit down. I mean, you too. In the evening, Dad and Grandma came home, and dinner turned out to be a complete disaster. Eden, you need to eat two of your carrots, <laughs> and then you can eat your bread. Eden decided that she didn't want to eat any of her vegetables, and so there was this complete protest. OK. Here. OK, you know what? Bye. Look at my eyes. Stop the complaining. Right now, well, this I is your like hey. To... This is your warning. Stop the complaining, or you're going to time out. <laughs> Eden's got an enormous amount of power and control over her parents. Yeah. Yeah. Eden and Jonathan were absolutely going to have no part of eating anything. So I'd like you to make it clear to the pair of them, I'm not having this nonsense anymore. Okay, as simple as that. Because right now we've got them acting like they're two years old. Jonah put his thinking cap on and finished first, 
So he was the first one to leave the table. And Jonathan sat there and cried, and so did Eden. Jonathan and Eden, you need to stop it right now. And they refused to listen to Mum. And she really had to stick to her guns and just lay down the rules, tell these kids what she expected, and then leave them. go back at the table and then say to them, I've asked you and already told you what I want you to eat, OK? And I want you to do as you're told and finish that off, because you won't be leaving this table until that is done. Jonathan and Eden, I have told you what I want you to do. Would you like Mommy to heat it up for you? Would you like me to heat it up for you? Joe just gave me the willpower to persevere. You know, I've done this. It works. Keep going. You're not hurting your kids. You're asking something very simple. You just want them to try. Let's, you know, just keep going. Right, she said no. OK. Right, well, let's go and play with the rest. It was a painstaking kind of time. She was definitely torn between, you know, just saying, OK, up from the table and sticking to her words and following through. Mommy! Yes? I ate the things that were right here. Come here. Good job. Oh, yes, you do get a cuddle and a hug with me. Oh. <laughs> mm. I am so great? proud of you. How does that feel <laughs> to know you did that? Eden, this is your last chance to have it heated up. Do you want it heated up, yes or no? <laughs> no? OK. <laughs> He never gave up. <laughs> she sat at that table, and so then before long, she was kind of dozing off, and her head was kind of going. She just held on till it was time to go to bed. I mean, she sat there forever. <laughs> Tell everybody good night, and then you're going to bed. The boys stay up playing. Okay. She doesn't have that privilege tonight. Okay. <laughs> She's got to see that it's not about falling asleep and getting away of not doing it. I definitely think that Eden was trying to control, and she lost. She knows she's not going to win. If these kids start to behave better, it's going to lessen the stress that the Addis family are already feeling because of the loss of losing Rick. Also, these kids are grieving too, and they've been affected by the other members of the family grieving. So that was my next step, to give these kids a way to grieve and remember their granddad at their own pace. Pirates used to keep things that were very valuable to them in these treasure chests. And it's exactly what we are going to do. We're going to keep objects and things that create fond and happy memories of Grandpa. It allows the children to process grief in their own time and allows the adults to recognise that these kids haven't forgot who Papi is, but they need to be able to heal in their own time, in their own space. This is great. Look at all these lovely little things you've collected he's that got, you've remembered from so your chest. Got... They did have a lot of fun with them. They enjoyed going on a little treasure hunt to find things that reminded them of of their pappy. These chests will grow as the kids do and become older as well. And there'll be little things that they'll add to that and little things that you guys will add to that as well. And when they're ready, which is most important, they will go and have a look at their chest. What is it with the cars? Because I remember him doing a lot of stuff at Daytona. I spent a lot of time with my dad out of the racetrack. It just became a true part of who our family, what we did. Did puppy go up in that as well? Yeah. He did? He loved that game. Did he? <laughs> I don't remember the last time that we were able to get through some stories or whatever without crying um, about my dad. So they felt good to, to laugh and remember and it to be a happy time. Charity, I'm going to leave you down here with the kids. And what I would love to do is to have some quality time with Tony and Leslie upstairs. Mum and Dad are also hurting, and so it's really important to see that they're supporting each other through such sensitive times. Can I ask you a question? How, how do you personally feel emotionally about Rick passing away? 
Because I, I gotta tell you that when, when my mum passed away, Tony, it was the most devastating thing that could have, that has ever happened to me, ever. I, I really honestly don't feel like I'm in mourning for Rick, for me personally. I mourn for my kids. I mourn that they're not gonna get the opportunities to know that I did. I grieve for my kids, not, not for myself. I was kind of surprised to see him actually get that emotional. It was good to see him just feel. You are, you are grieving and mourning not having Rick around. You are, because he was that special to you, because you loved him that much. And it's all right, Tony. Like, it's okay for you to mourn for yourself. I really encourage you to, to give yourself permission to be able to be in touch with those feelings and to be able to say, it, it's all right that I feel that way because I love the man. But I really want you to be able to reach out to Leslie because it allows her to be able to reach out to you as well. But at the same time, for you to connect on a much stronger level than ever with regards to how you support each other as parents. I know you want to give her a hug, really. <laughs> I know that wink meant give me a squeeze. Give her a squeeze. I know what it meant, huh? Tony really opened up emotionally, which I was really pleased to see. But it was important to remind Leslie and Tony that even though they're grieving, it doesn't stop them from having fun. I think what we'll do in about five minutes is kindly ask Mum and Dad to leave the table because I do believe that I have a dance class waiting for the pair of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's date night tonight for Mummy and Daddy. One, two. I heard that Leslie loved to dance. However, since Rick's passed away, there's been a tremendous amount of grief and it's put stress on Leslie and Tony's marriage. So I felt it was very important that Leslie and Tony spend time together as a couple to, to connect with one another. One, a two, one, a two. <laughs> okay. Especially since my dad died, we have not spent much time out, just the two of us. Two, one, a two, rock, one, a two. <laughs> Mum and Dad really had fun dancing, so for homework, I asked them to take their kids out so they could all have fun. Feeling good? Are we feeling confident? Yeah. Yeah, good. Because you've already shown already that you're doing really well. I definitely feel like we're heading in the right direction, and I feel like I've made a lot of commitments to my family to persevere and to, and to follow through with this. I hope and pray I don't fall back in my own ways. Don't forget our discipline. Follow through. You know, I think we're going to be forced to put ourselves on the same page and get in line. Thank you. Bye. You're Bye. Right. Good night. This family have made some gradual progress. I just hope they hold up while I'm gone, but only time will tell. After three days, I'm curious to see if Mum and Dad have held it together. I just hope they've had the opportunity to take the kids out and have some fun. How are you all? Good, how are you? Hello. Yeah, very well, thank you. Let's take a look then. Wow. Yes, we can go out. Yep, let's go. Let's Ooh. see if we can hop. You ready? Hop, 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 hop. <laughs> Run down to the other driveway and come back. Go! Woo! Oh. 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 OK, everybody. What hurts, Eden? Come on, come on. Okay. All righty. Hold on, guys, okay? Okay. So the good thing is, is that you braved up and took him out. The sad thing is it only lasted for seven minutes. <laughs> Stuff does happen. You know, kids do fall over, they do hurt themselves. What you could have done in that scenario is actually have just brought Eden in and just attended to her, and then you were inside 
actually charity. So Eden could have stayed indoors if she chose to, or if not, she would have come back out again. But you brought all the troops back in and then like, nobody got to go out and enjoy. But it's a start, which is great, you know? Daddy. Yummy. That's Daddy. Elijah's pizza. <laughs> this is Elijah's pizza. Daddy. It's hot, so wait just a second. Elijah. <laughs> Elijah, this is your pizza. Daddy. We're going to try a bite. I want to stop you there for a minute. He knows what pizza looks like. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking at you thinking, do not pull the wall over my eyes, woman. What are you doing? <laughs> Seriously. What I want you to do is take him to the table five minutes before. So get the food down him that you need him to have because of its nutritional value. Then, if he has the pizza with everyone else, he'll nibble at a few pieces like you know he does, and then he won't want the rest. Oh, look at me. You are not going to fight me. Stand up. <laughs> and you're going to sit in timeout. <laughs> Your timeout is right there. Okay. Oh, play. Play. <laughs> So if I put him in timeout, I need to follow it through. Okay. Nana put you in timeout because you have a really, really bad attitude. Tell Nana you're sorry. Okay. Charity, when you first did the timeout with Jonathan, he was screaming and you spoke to him, and that gave him leeway to escalate his temper even more. Second, when you did, it was in your everyday voice. It wasn't, Jonathan, you've misbehaved, all right? Also, what's important is when you do do it, you follow completely through. Because if all three of you can do it separately and you've mastered it, then if it does become to a point where you're feeling a bit tired, one can take over. We've made good tracks, and it is my duty now to make sure that we tweak all those last ends. And we are definitely going to sort out this mealtime situation so that we can deal with Elijah and that he can be happy having his food that the rest of the kids have. I see some great work, so I expect the same this time round. Let's get ready. <laughs> What I saw in the DVD and the meltdown at dinner time is very clear to me that there still are a lot of issues with this family that surround the dining table. So, should we go off to a restaurant? Yeah! Should we go? I think we should yeah. go. Yeah. I was excited to be going out for dinner. I mean, that's something that we've we've tried um, in vain sometimes. Okay. <laughs> Mommy do one and then you do one. Can I have some? Elijah was really digging his heels in and not wanting to eat the food he had in front of him, but wanting bread. He knows what he wants, and he's testing you on it. You know, you've got to break that habit, because otherwise, all he'll want to do is live off of junk food. You know, it really is going cold turkey, because he's not going to starve. There's no two ways about that. And when he misbehaves, like, look him in the eye and say, that's naughty behaviour, now stop it. Because he knows. He knows. After I gave Mum a few tips, she was able to get Elijah to forget about the bread and eat what was in front of him. And because the other children behaved wonderfully, the evening was a pleasant one. Pretty tasty, isn't it? Good idea. Going to dinner was great. I was really impressed with, you know, the three older kids. You're being lovely. Look how much Nizzles I got. Great. Right. The experience was a wonderful one and it's definitely shown this family that they are more than capable of being able to go out as a family and enjoy trying new foods, enjoy the experience of being out together and, and do so again and again. <laughs> <laughs>
before I left, I had one place that I wanted both Leslie and Charity to go, so I left a note, and in that note, it had what I had in mind. It's important that grief is respected, and I wanted to give them a chance to be by themselves alone. Dearest Leslie and Charity, I want the both of you to know your love for Rick will create the fondest of memories that will be treasured and remain forever in your hearts. One of those, those memories, memories you both hold dear was spent in time at the Indianapolis Moto Speedway. His passion for Indy 500 was so great that he worked for the company that made tires for the race cars. So in honor of Rick, I want you both to go back to the Speedway for a special tribute to the man who loved to be called Pappy. <laughs> Spent a lot of time with my dad out at the racetrack. He was a huge IndyCar fan. He brought you, you here by himself. So that was one of the times he tried to do one-on-one -on -one time. The Indy 500 is a huge part of our family's tradition. We've been doing it for generations. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marco Andretti. Very nice, <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you. I'm standing there in front of this Indy race car and around walks Marco Andretti and, you know, if you're a race fan at all, you know who the Andrettis are because they've been racing forever. My dad has taken us here for as long as I can remember. Oh, that's great. <laughs> In memory of, of, of Rick, this is uh, what we'd like to present to you guys. <laughs> when Marco Andretti handed us the plaque that was presented from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and it had um, In Memory of Pappy on it, I, I was just completely blown away. For Joe to have thought of doing that for us, it was just all so very overwhelming. And also, tickets to the uh, 2008 Indianapolis 500. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. To be able to keep that tradition going, you know, for our family, and that just meant so much. And it's a, it's you know, coming from a family who can appreciate, you know, generations of the Indy 500. There just aren't words to describe what that meant. Well, that's great. Just absolutely awesome. Thank you all so my much. My pleasure, my pleasure. <laughs> Walking out on the track with my mom was, was bittersweet. You know, lots of memories of being there with dad and just the reality that that's not how it is. But at the same time, you know, the sun was just shining and I just thought, you know, dad's, dad's happy. Dad's really happy right now. <laughs> I think this family has come a tremendous way. I really do. Elijah, can Georgia have a big hug? Because oh, I'm going way. Oh. I think through this process, Leslie has grown immensely. I can just see on a daily basis the change. Keep taking care of your family. Keep connecting. Give me a hug. I'll give Joe credit. You know, she is very, very good at what she does. She's got a gift for it. Hey, I'm very proud of you. Thanks. Thanks, Jojo. <laughs> I just feel like I've been shown the light. I don't know, given my life back, given, you know, hope. Hi. Two hands. <laughs> Two pair <of> hands. <laughs> In the time that I've spent with them, they've been able to put things into perspective and to really do the best by their children and by themselves. <laughs> I think it did give us hope for the future and for our family and just to know that we can laugh.